Okay, so picking up where we left off. So we uh, finished this line last. We'll start with this line, uh, which is HCPGDHHW. So you see some of the letters which are coming up. I mean, look at that A. That is just magical. Uh, but also, you can see that some of them are done at 2. And some of them are done at uh, 3. Actually, I, I should really be using the same um, guidelines that I use here because this, this one is just a little bit bigger. Um, right. So let's look at these. Um, we're starting with that H. <clears throat> so again, remember, you know, I'm, I'm using the flat of the pencil. So it's, it's not a point. So that's a two. I, I love this uh, this expression of the H. Uh, I might need to have a slightly sharper pencil because it um, it it utilizes a sort of I and and a C. So we get And I, I think the thing about this is, you know, you, you have to make a real sort of... Um, a really narrow C. Now, that's too narrow here. So I'm just going to a little bit more patient with this because I'm trying to show you something and I'm rushing it and it's 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 collapsing much better So lots of things to look at here. Um, I'll look at this D uh, when I'm looking at it with the with the, uh, the the nib, but also look at this much more sort of circular shape rather than a flattened ellipse, because uh, you know with my P I do this, and I keep it in that narrow parallelogram. The C again is, is something to really look out for because uh, with my C, I tend to do this. So it's essentially a really narrow ellipse, what I refer to as an oblate ellipse, um, referring to the sides being flattened rather than the top and the bottom. But this is much more of a triangular shape. So again, it comes back to paying attention to those plain-sided figures. So this is at two. And this exit stroke is really important because and they're, they're generally ligatured to a minuscule.
So notice I didn't do this, which is what I would normally do. I've sort of come, so that's the 55 there. This is on the 55. That is not 55. Too much of a flick there. And this this exit ligature on the G um, is, is, is always really fascinating. So um, I think I made it a little too circular. That's better. That's a much better shape. So that's not the shape. <laughs> this looks like a like one of the the A's that we saw a couple of days ago. The D is so. I know lots of people struggle with the D. So I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. Um, let me do this H. Uh, where's that H? Notice this isn't joined. And you know, when you look at historical documents, you have to you have to also think, is it not joined because, you know, they just made a mistake? Or is it not joined because they didn't want to join it? So I, I would have to be a little bit more careful with that. So did you see I went across and stopped and lifted up? Okay, so let's 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 look at this D. Uh, the next set of letters are actually um, double height letters. So I'm I'm going to look at this on a triple height to show you my proportioning for the D. So when I use my um, my angular confinement system from, from my fourfold symmetry, this is what happens. So this is over this is over by a sixth, and the foot here is over by a sixth to balance this space. Now this gives us an ellipse. This also gives us an ellipse. We also have an overriding ellipse. Which holds the letter in place really um, accurately. Historically, the D's tend to be rounder. So we have, where's our D? Okay, so let's let's do this bigger so that you can see. Now the first the first thing to understand is this. I am on the 55. This is the 55. This this is not 55. And as soon as you come off the 55, you alter the plane sided figure that it, it bounds. So this uses a parallelogram and an oblate ellipse. This is using a series of circles. And because we're doing a wiggle, so remember, you know, those of you who do a P like this, that's a wiggle, because the P is actually this. So that has to be on the 55 as well as does this. Because the D is a wiggle, you can go up and down and around and over and back on yourself. So let, let me redo that. That's a little too steep, so I want it to be about there.
So much rounder. Um, I sort of feel that's a little bit too upright for what I'm looking at for my historical study. That's closer to it. So, th so there are a number of things that can change the structure and positioning of the D. The first thing is this line of universal beauty stroke. If it's not on 55, you don't end up with a narrower shape. Um, the next thing that can cause this sort of more circular structure to develop is the size of this half ellipse um, or flattened ellipse. Because when you come down, you go up and over and under as opposed to down and across and over and under. So those two shapes are really important in helping you to understand why the letter does what it does and how to sort of avoid it. Um, where are we at? D, 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 H, we've done W. So these are all double height lines. Uh, maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit more or oh, too much. Oh. So these double height lines give us, oh, this is a great W. So remember that M? This W does the same sort of thing. Now, th there is another version of this W which is way sexier. Press, release, press. Remember pressure in the middle and out. So we have these two contrasting convex and concave, sh concave shapes really balancing each other. So I would stop here and then I would come back over and down and then go back up and leave it. It's all about the rhythm of the writing. Now, I've done this and that. You can also do that and that. So notice that here I've done, so I've created a ball serif, a, a, almost a ball finial, and I've done a little loop around it to get through that. Let's just do that again. And I think with, with, with these shapes at the top, you have to be really, 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 really careful because there's so many variables. You can do this. So I'm, I, I'm lifting to show you it's coming to a point hairline, no pressure, pressure, up and over and down, up and over and under and down, very, very different shapes. Then you can have combinations of these shapes where you're actually looking at the integrity of the line, up and over and not really under and down. So it's sort of like this, but this, just a little over and under. Um, and then you have something like this. So these are on the 55. And this comes over and 
around and under. So it's, it's sort of a little bit of a swing. It's kind of like the wiggle, but with not so much of a wiggle. Oh, this B is great. I love this B. So let me do that again. So the proportions are there. So notice I didn't I didn't come down and down and down and down. I didn't I'm not staying in a parallelogram. I'm actually coming down and up and across rather than up and over and around and down. So that changes where the deposition um, of, of, of weight is on the, on the letter. Uh, or the B, can we add another letter in there? Yeah, let, let's just throw an E in for you guys. Uh, so this is the last letter for today. Oh, actually, I'll do a Z because <laughs> the E's, there are three E's to do which are, which are really beautiful. Um, this set is really funky. I'll do it up here. <laughs> so if I did this using my fourfold symmetry, I would do this. And I would keep all of all of these strokes on the on the fifty five, and that that doesn't happen with the eighteenth century letter. So this is here, and this comes off at a different angle, joining a little bit further down. Um, so it's 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 really quite fascinating to Z, and I'll I'll cover that using my fourfold symmetry um, to show you how I construct a Z and how that varies from this, and then we look at those really lovely E's. Okay.